So good morning and welcome to our Sunday service for the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast. My name is Reverend Dr. Ron Fox and I welcome all of you that are here today that are listening now and that are gonna be listening during the week. For those of us now here, this would be a good time to turn off your phones. You know, I, I think every week I would say it, and last week when I said it, half the people had to take their phone out and turn it off. So um, our practitioner this morning is Ginny Panic, and our reader is uh, Ed Powers. And I just wanna say if any of you listening this week have never been to a Center for Spiritual Living, we believe there's one God, many paths to that God, and we're here to love, honor, and support you, no matter what your divine path is. And the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast is a safe haven for people of all beliefs and lifestyles, whoever you are and wherever you may find yourself on your journey of faith, you're welcome here. So I do have a few announcements. Next Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 17th, is our Secret Santa and Potluck. And I just wanna say, we the center is gonna provide plates, silverware, Becky and I are gonna bring Diet Coke and sparkling cider. If anybody wants to bring their own drinks, that's fine, no alcohol. Also, Reverend Jenna asked me to announce if anybody has not gotten their secret Santa yet, please get in touch with, with her and she'll tell you who it is. Oh, check your spam folder first. And then if you don't have it, get to Reverend Jenna. Even if you don't check your spam first, you can get to her. Um, our, our Christmas Eve service is going to be the evening of December 24th at 5 p.m. We're gonna have a candle lighting service. So um, please come. Also, um, we're gonna do a New Year's Eve service on the day of New Year's Eve, December 31st at three o'clock. So anybody going out that night, you'll have time to do that and we'll all have New Year's Day off. When I mention that to people, everybody loved that idea. So I expect to see a lot of people here. Also next week is unexpected income. So please set the intention that unexpected income will come into your life. And you can next week tell us your story a little bit and share some of your unexpected income with us. I wanna do something a little different um, with the, I'm, done, I'm complete with the announcements. I, I wanna read something to you and I'll tell you why I read it. I wanna plant a seed um, after I read it, okay? And it's coming from a really great book called Experiencing the Beacon Within by me. So here, here is the, um, the reading and it's titled The Move. Last week, my center moved. This Sunday, we will, be in our, we will be having our first service at our new location. Finding this new site was a lesson in how keeping focused on what might be rather than bemoaning what is leads to doors opening that we never knew existed. Our former location was affordable, but rather dark and many members found it unappealing, so our Sunday attendance was falling. When that happened, our finances were taking a hit. Yet, never once did our board panic or move into fear. Each month, we would recognize that our what our situation was and then reaffirm that the divinely perfect home was calling to us, and soon it did. Several months ago, uh, my wife and I were having lunch with a friend who is a unity minister and is the spiritual director of a very large and attractive church. Out of the blue, she asked us if we would like to share part of her space, and she made us an offer that was very appealing financially. That is how this came about. Ernest Holmes remind us that thoughts of lack manifest as limitation. Thoughts of abundance manifest as success and happiness. When we're going through difficult times, it's not always easy to remember this or to rise above thoughts of lack, but we can do it. 
we can train ourselves to think thoughts that are positive and affirming. It would have been very easy for my board and me to see what was happening all around us and fall prey to negative thinking, but we did not. And as we affirm that we knew our good would manifest, it did because the law responds to what we place in it. We all go through difficult times. That is part of the human condition but we need not allow we we need not wallow in our misery remember you are never alone spirit is always with you move beyond what you are seeing and know that the best is yet to come when i face difficult times it helps me to remember these words from dr holmes train yourself to think what you wish to think be what you wish to be Feel what you wish to feel and place no limits on life. I read that because I wanted to plant the seed that I know we're going through difficult financial times. That's why we're going to have our meeting on January 8th. But that doesn't need to be what the outcome is. We can train ourselves to think positively, to know that we are gonna have the outcome we want. Nobody believed in, not that we didn't believe in it, but this came totally out of the blue. Reverend Beth Head, who was the minister here, Beck and I used to have lunch with her every six weeks. We never told her we were struggling. And out of the blue, she said, would you guys like to share my space? And when we asked her later, what, what brought it about? She said, I just want to make sure you guys survive. I love you guys, and I want to see you here. Well, we love all of you, and we want to make sure we survive. So I wanted to plant that seed to please to put your prayers in, your thoughts in, that we know better days are going to come, and we can be sure that they do. All right? Thank you. So let us take this moment to come together and feel the life of God flow through us easily and effortlessly, knowing that there is only one source, and that source is everywhere present, and that source lives within each one, moves through each one, and brings forth the glory of God being revealed as each one. And so I'm grateful today for this understanding and for this source of information that always is available to me, as I clear out those things that no longer serve me, I can more fully and more consciously welcome in the spirit of the living God that is everywhere present and always available. I welcome it into my heart, my soul, my mind, into my life. I let it guide me. I let it speak to me. I have conversations with it. And I know that all is well when I'm in this space of understanding. All is well. And I am grateful and thankful that this is true. And I'm grateful for the Center for Spiritual Living Space Coast. I'm grateful for Reverend Dr. Ron Fox and his message this morning that inspires us, that awakens us, that pulls us into a more beautiful understanding of the truth of who we are. I am grateful for this day as it unfolds and I allow it to use me for its greater good. And so I just release this with complete gratitude and faith that all is well. I release it, I let go and I say, and so it is. Good morning. Good morning. I title this Communicating with God. Human beings are relational and being created in God's image, I propose that God is relational also. God being omni everything uh, is aware, present, and compassionately involved in every detail of who we are. 
I feel certain that it designed a method of communication between our consciousness and God consciousness. And I like what Barb read last Sunday. She said, God has set up laws that respond to signal strength. This means that the strength of our desires and preferences matters, both individually and collectively. I believe every thought is a prayer. Just some we make stronger and repeat more than others. With 600, or rather, with 60,000 plus thoughts a day, which ones manifest? When you speak, you're speaking a few of those thoughts and you make those more powerful. And when you act, you act on even fewer thoughts and make those even more powerful. Speaking and acting shows you which of your thoughts are most likely to manifest. Given all this, I feel certain that God hears us probably a lot more than we'd want. Uh, the not so easy part is hearing, feeling, knowing, and understanding God. I've always believed that everyone's relationship with God is different and personal. Therefore, communicating with God is different and personal for everyone. It could be a small whisper, a gut feeling, suddenly you just know. For some, it could be a thought that just rushes in that had nothing to do with what you were thinking of before. It might be a dream, but I'm pretty sure God will not set a bush on fire on your front lawn. One way to hear God's voice is to ask God to speak to you. And I suppose you could also ask for help in hearing, feeling, knowing, and understanding God. Now there's a thought. Now, Reverend Dr. Ron Fox will tell us about a conversation with God. <clears throat> Thank you, Ed. I just have to say one thing. Um, I've always wondered this. I've read that we all have 60,000 thoughts a day. I'd like to know who the hell counts that. I mean, so, you know, before I begin the talk, when, when I was listening to, to um, Daniel this morning, and, and again, with that, it just reminded me of a story. So before we begin, I want to tell the story because I think it relates. And it's about an English scholar who, who uh, in, who's in the Western Hemisphere, who travels east to speak with the Zen master to learn about Zen. And they sit down and this English scholar is telling the Zen master everything he knows. And so the Zen master starts to pour tea and he pours a cup of tea and he lets the cup uh, the tea go over the cup into the saucer, and he lets it go over the saucer and eventually into the into the scholar's lap. And the scholar jumps up and says, what are you doing? And he said, just like this cup overflowed, you're overflowing, telling me everything you know. How can I teach you Zen if that's what you're doing? And the point is, he was saying, you need to come to me if you want to learn with beginner's mind. And I think given what, what Daniel was saying about empty hands and what Ed just read, that we need to come to spirit like children with an empty mind and not with our own ideas and of what spirit needs to do because then you're not listening and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't work. So um, last week, I said this week's service was gonna be a little different. And I promise you it is. So I, I wanna begin, I wanna begin reading something to you from Google uh, about spiritual guidance. And Google says at its core, spiritual guidance is the process and experience of receiving wisdom from the divine. The practice of establishing contact with a higher power has been with humankind throughout the ages and can be found in nearly every belief system. So I've been rereading 
this book titled Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. Does anybody remember that book? I know, I know we talked about doing it um, in our book group and we might do it again sometime. And Neil sits down to do some writing and soon discovers that he's either talking to or channeling God. And the book is filled with all kinds of spiritual insight and was a New York Times bestseller. And it, it um, impacted many people's spiritual insight. Ryan? Uh, yeah, does somebody have a question? Ryan? Um, hmm, who said that? Ed, are you doing something with the controls? No, no? No, Ryan, it's God. It's God? You're, you're here, right? Right here? I'm everywhere. Isn't that what you teach? Well, yeah, it's what we teach, but um, I, I've never heard your voice at church before. You're, you're usually a little more subtle. I speak in many ways. I try to guide and teach and show truth, which usually reveals itself as that voice within each of you. It is a voice that is closest to humankind. Okay, well, how about this then? When I'm searching for answers, God, that inner voice can be a little confusing. Sometimes I think it might be my imagination, so I'm not always sure whether it's you or not. If you listen, really listen to me, then you will know just what you need to know. You already know everything you will need to know. I made you that way. Well, I know, but it's not always that easy to decipher. You have to understand, I'm always getting these questions. Should I do this? Should I do that? What should I do? Like, I'm the one that's supposed to be making the decisions for everyone else? I know, but, you know, we don't want to mess it up. Fear? What? I said fear. What's that supposed to mean? I know how you feel. It's scary because we always want to do the right thing. I understand. But lots of people put their faith in fear, not in God. There are two emotions, fear and love. Every human thought and action are based in either fear or love. There is no other motivation. All other ideas are but derivatives of the two. I've never heard it put like that before. I do know that love demonstrates more easily, but sometimes I become afraid and I just keep coming to you and coming to you and coming to you in endless prayer until things are resolved. That's right. And it, and it has everything to do with faith. If you have true faith in the divine, there would not be fear. Fear doesn't exist in my realm. Only there where you are. Okay. I guess that's when we look for guidance the most. When we start to understand that we need help changing the fear to faith. Let's connect this to your decision making. I gave you the power of choice. The situations in your life are created by you because of your free will to make those choices. I've, I'm always standing on the sidelines. I want what you want. It is not for me to say either way. You are my children and I support your desires. Does that help? Well, yes, but there were a few times that I wish you might have interceded in some way and told me, wait, stop, don't do it. But if I would have done that, it would have interfered with your free will. I wouldn't have had a problem with that. <laughs> it would have interfered with what you came here for. Well, that doesn't seem right. I justified all those wrong terms by telling myself they were lessons that I needed to learn. You mean that's a bunch of crap? Correct. You came into this life with nothing to learn. You have only to demonstrate what you already know. You continue to create yourself anew through every experience you have. 
Well, I'll say, I call it being born again. Do you know how many lives I've had in just this lifetime? Well, yes, I do. Maybe this will help you understand. When I was writing with Neil in Conversations with God, I told him this story about a little soul. Do you want to hear it? All right, I do. You all, you all want to hear this story? All right. Okay, here we go. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who are you? I, I'm hearing a different voice. Just another lesson that I'm in all things and all people. Now for the story. There once was a little soul who knew itself to be the light. This was a new soul and so anxious for experience. I am the light, it said. I am the light. Yet all the knowing of it and all the saying of it could not substitute for the experience of it. And in the realm from which the soul emerged, there was nothing but the light. Every soul was grand, every soul was magnificent, and every soul shone with the brilliance of my awesome light. And so the little soul in question was as a candle in the sun, in the midst of the grandest light of which it was a part, it could not, it, it could not see itself nor experience itself as who and what it really is. Now, it came to pass that this soul yearned and yearned to know itself. And so great was its yearning that I one day said, do you know, little one, what you must do to satisfy this yearning of yours? Oh, what God, what? I'll do anything, the little soul said. You must separate yourself from the rest of us, I answered, and then you must call upon yourself the darkness. What is darkness, O oh holy one? The little soul asked. That which you are not, I replied, and the soul understood. What happened next, God? The little soul did, removing itself from the all and went to another realm. And in the realm, the soul had the power to call into its experience all sorts of darkness. And this it did. So are you saying that this beautiful soul become, became light to the darkness? Yes, Ron, just like all of you. And then the experience of the dark night of the soul, what happens then? All of you are a light to the darkness and truth is revealed. I was afraid once. I, I, thought, I thought you had left me. I have never left or forsaken my children and stand by them always, ready to remind each of who they really are. So God, then how are we guided? What help do we have? And how do we know we have it? Throughout the years, I have provided many teachers that show the way. Some you will know, such as Jesus, or the Buddha, or Muhammad. Some may have names like Deepak, or Wayne Dyer, or Louise Hay. And hey, how about that Ernest Holmes guy? I know you especially like him, then there's the Quimby's, the Fillmore's, Mary Baker Eddy. Oh gosh, the list goes on and on. What other types of guidance might we receive? I've also sent parents, parent figures, and children. Children? Yes, children. Parents tend to think that they are the teachers and the children are the students when it's actually the other way around. I've seen that in many families, mine included. You see, I know what I'm doing. You, you really do. Although there have been times when I've gone to you for, uh, in prayer for guidance, 
you know, I entered the chamber in secret with questions or sometimes to bare my soul. And it always seems that I made the right decision afterwards, although I'm not quite sure how it happened. Guidance can also come as I speak to you as intuition, inspiration, or gut instinct that tells us right from wrong. When you pray, you open the space to listen with that inner ear to see with that inner eye. I give all my children that inner knowingness. That's starting to make more sense now. Some choose not to listen and choose anger or fear instead. They proceed to create experiences that support those emotions. Then they get all upset with me about why I did this to them or made them go through the experiences they created by their own choices and free will. I made some choices years ago. Ernest Holmes says in his text that we can recreate whatever we've created. If we don't like what's showing up, we get to stop it and to create anew. I did that. And I created a vessel that was filled with love. So I know you've heard this before, but thank you. You're welcome. It sure took you long enough, though. That was your choice. My, you're really quick today. Touche. So I know I'm going against my own rules for asking God, but why? Why did things have to be so difficult? Couldn't I have gone straight to the good stuff? <laughs> Once again, I do not create situations or circumstances. You do. But I do, what I, but I do stand on the side ready to help. Do you understand that for love to exist, I had to create a polar opposite to it? I've thought about that. For you to know love, you had to experience everything that was not love. You are made in the image and likeness of God. You created the rest with the choice and power that was given to you. You can do what you want with life. I want what you want for yourself. And I support that, whatever that is. Kind of puts the responsibility back on me then, doesn't it? It does. Why do you think that there is so much fear in your world? Because there's not enough faith? My sweet children, I hear your every prayer, every thought, every heartache, and your willingness to express love. Just to be willing is enough. I'm going to have to leave you now, but know this. I am with you always. I will not forsake you nor leave you. And you are my child in whom I am well pleased. So long, God. Thank you. And I love you. You guys going to stay back there? Oh, you want that screen? Huh? Yeah, I want everybody to see you. The, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so it is. So I just want to thank Edgar and Becky for for helping and I hope you enjoyed it and I know it was a different kind of service right
know he was gone. You know, when I went, and it, this isn't Becky's favorite thing to do, to stand up here and speak. And when I asked her to do it, she jumped and said, oh, yeah, I'll do it. And Edgar did the same thing. So I really appreciate it a lot. And also, I should mention, the script was written by a dear friend of Becky and mine, Pixie Dufour, who, when I asked her if I could have it, said absolutely, and just emailed it to me in like 30, 30 seconds. So, oh, we have an alternate usher. God is our usher today, huh? <laughs> did, did you guys like the idea of a female God? <laughs> She tells me every day that I'm nothing and she's God, so I get it. <laughs> so if the rest of us could repeat the um, joyful giving app uh, affirmation in the bulletin, if we could do it together. I could see I'm doing this myself. I, I live in a consciousness of good, divine love, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give and all, all that I receive. receive. Thank, Thank you, God. So for those of you looking on, I just want to say um, to donate, all you have to do is go on our website and click the donate button and it'll give you all kinds of options to do. Also, I just want to say Victoria um, just became a member today and Mihai a couple of weeks ago. So welcome. We're really thrilled to have the two of you. So, you know, I was worried that the script was too short. Actually, we've run late. So if we could just take a moment, I'll do a quick prayer and go within. And just know that that divine presence is always within us, just like that script said, it's always here. We are never alone. It never forsakes us. That divine presence is always with us touching our lives, bringing its healing presence to us, through us, and for us. And as our script ends with these words from the divine, I am with you always. I will not forsake you. I will not leave you. And you are my children in whom I am well pleased. And for that, I just give thanks and release the word and let it be. And so it is. So now if we can um, just stand, we'll do our closing song and our closing affirmation, and then we'll stay on. Did you guys like this service, by the way? Was it fun for something different? <laughs>